Happy Monday, kittens! This is, oh gosh, it's May 1st, 2017, and this is episode 180 of Not a Podcast. I am your host, Amanda. Thank you so much for joining me today, both new and returning viewers. I appreciate that you've taken some of your time to catch up with me today. Show notes can be found on the blog at sonitpicky.net, and there is also a wrap-up post for April 2017 up now. I do those every month if you're curious about what I've been working on and how much I've knit. Um, I usually try to keep up with my goals too, but this uh, month I didn't. Please join us in the Not A Podcast Ravelry group, and I am the Dyer for Lammy Toes, which is lammytoesyarn.etsy.com, and I don't think I gave you my names around the internet. I am Wit on Ravelry, and I am so nitpicky on Instagram and on YouTube. Sorry guys, I'm trying to find a place with good lighting today, and uh, I think this is about as good as it's going to get. It's very overcast and gloomy here, and I, try, I decided to try sitting on my floor in my bedroom, which I'm normally not a floor sitter. Um, when I do record up here, I normally record over here on my bed, but I thought the floor setup might work a little bit more easily. However, you can see my mess and I actually threw my sweatshirt over some laundry that needs to be folded that has been sitting on my bed because I'm an adult and I get those things done promptly. So today, let's talk. Um, I'm gonna save chatter until the end. I have two finished objects to show you guys. No new works in progress, but I'll talk about what I'm going to work on next. I actually have some spinning, and when we do life chatter at the end, I'll try to do some media recommendations, because I meant to talk about some of the things I've been watching this week and then completely forgot about it. So let's get into things. All right, you guys, so since we last talked about two weeks ago, um, I finished up a couple of things, one you've seen before and one you have not. The first is a long, long-term pair of socks. These are my hand-spun socks, or my second pair of the year, for my husband. Um, and I've talked about these since February, I think, so you guys are probably sick of seeing them. These are from some Hello Yarn hand-spun that I spun up in a colorway called But the Tree Glowed. I think it was December 2015's Club Colorway. It was on Corydale, and I managed to find another bump of it in one of my patchwork kits, so I had plenty, a little over 5 ounces, I think like 5.2 ounces, to make him socks. Uh, when all was said and done, I had about a yard maybe a yard, one and a third yard, so like four feet left over of yarn, not too much. I could have theoretically knit another round on each sock probably, but they are finished. Not ends woven in, but finished. Look at how long these things are. This is where the foot is, which we've talked before. My husband's foot length is like taller than my head. And then I actually got a pretty decent leg on these. So I think that in the future, when I spin yarn for him specifically for socks, I'm going to aim for um, at least five, if not six to eight ounces of yarn. I think six ounces is gonna be the sweet spot. But as you can see, the two socks, as you see from the side, actually turned out pretty similar in how they knit up. Like you can see, I can't remember how I split up this yarn to spin, but I remember I did something um, fractal-ish with it. Um, I think, yeah, I don't, I didn't control it too well, but you can see that these two set of socks actually do look like they are brothers. Not twins, but they look like they go together. And you can see all the beautiful colors that this two-ply made up. Um, this braid of fiber was mostly this orange color with um, a dark green, a bright green. There was a section of aqua teal, which you can see in areas like here where it blended together. And I can't remember if there was any brown or not. I think the brown has resulted from when the green and the orange have gotten together. And uh, yeah, but I mean, just look at how huge these things are. I'm just, <laughs> and they're fun. So I knit these the same way that I knit all the rest of my socks. I started with a toe up cast on. I like to use the Turkish cast on or the figure eight cast on. Um, I did increases every round for like the first, I think for him I do like the first six rounds because I have to make um, his socks about an inch wider than I have to do mine to get around his foot. So I did it for the first six and then I did every third round until I got up to the full stitch count, which I think on these... 
was 72 or 74 stitches and then I knit them all the way up until I got to about an inch and a half before I wanted to put in the heel and I put in uh, four more sets of increases to give more depth to the fish lips kiss heel. Based on the initial fittings, this looks like it was a good solution to the problem. In general, I knit my husband's socks in heavier weight yarn, usually at least sport weight if not DK, and the height of the stitches is enough to get around his really large uh, deep instep. But in this fingering weight yarn, it wasn't going to work. So I threw in all those extra increases so that this depth of heel would be deeper so it added you know like an extra uh probably between a quarter and a half an inch there with all the extra short rows and then when we came out of the heel i quickly decreased all but one set of those increases back out and then finished up the sock so overall i am very pleased with how they turned out oh and then i did um, deeper than usual ribbing two by two and finished off I think with him I did just a Russian bind off which is knit two stitches knit them together through the back loop because for him unlike me my husband does not have like <laughs> really awesomely thick calf muscles his legs are much leaner than mine as with a lot of tall people a lot of his muscles are leaner than mine and I'm very short so mine are more squat but because of this, he can get away with a slightly less stretchy bind off. But I mean, it's still very stretchy. It's just it wouldn't be stretchy enough for me at the stitch counts that I use on my socks. So these are finally done, you guys. I think out of those five ounces, there were there was over 450 yards. I can't remember. It was not quite 500. I can't remember if it was 470 something or 490 something. But I used all but just the tiniest little bit. There was a yard and maybe a little bit of change left over. So that's about as good as that gets for guessing with two at a time hand spun socks. Because the thing about hand spun is that it's also inconsistent. Um, I'm not the kind of person who I can get the exact same weight all the way through a skein. So in some portions of these, the yarn's thicker and some of it's thinner. Um, but overall, it gave a really nice cushy sock and I knit them at a gauge that worked really well for the varying widths in the sock yarn. Um, they aren't quite as soft as Merino. Corydale's a little coarser, like I wouldn't be able to wear it on my skin. My princess skin on my neck is just like nope but my husband is used to wearing army wool and if you've never felt army wool it's that stereotypical really cheap very very scratchy wool that you think of when you know when people tell you about how, how much they hate wool it's that kind of wool so these feel I'm sure very nice compared to his normal so I'm hoping that he's really happy with how tall these are um, when he was home he didn't try on the finished sock I couldn't find it at the time so I'm hoping these will be tall enough and he will like the height to them at least if nothing else they are a really good start so those are finally done which means I will be able to start a third pair of socks um, and I'm not gonna put I'll put in the video in just a little bit but my daughter pulled finally my first bag from my personal sock club this year um, I'm going to have I think I'm gonna be pretty behind on those I'm not gonna quite finish it out but that's okay so once I finished that, I decided that I wanted to finish up another project that was on in the work in progress section of my Ravelry notebook. Um, I don't know if this bothers other people, but for me, it bothers me to have a project sitting in that section long term. If it's not something like a blanket where I'm working on it in just little portions at a time. And I had had a project sitting in there that I started the first one and finished the first one in August of last year. You guys may remember that I had knit a very large pill bug for my son from this book, Huge and Huggable Mochi Mochi. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce Anna's last name because I'm really not sure how that's pronounced. And I meant to knit my daughter one and I had shown you guys the yarn for my daughter way, way back when. And I decided that now was the time to start it because I knew it would take me three, maybe four days to knit at most and that it would make me feel really accomplished and it would give me a very large boost to my yarn yardage out and knit for the month. So this is Roland the Roly Poly from this book. And Roland is a very large pill bug. Um, I enjoy this book a lot. There's a couple other patterns I want to knit out of here, but I actually want to do the opposite and I want to take small yarn and actually shrink them down a little bit, one of them anyway. But I have that. 
And so for my daughter, I finally knit her pill bug, which he is super cute, but he's getting really blown out here in the sunlight. And um, last time when I knit my son's, uh, this cream that I'm using, which is Martha Stewart Extra Soft Wool, and I think it's buttermilk is the slightly warm off-white color. Um, I used just over half of the amount in the cake to finish his. So what I ended up doing is I knew I was going to need a little bit of extra for her. So I had her pick another color. Um, and she picked the same wool, but in a different colorway called lilac. And then I had originally pulled some of this Knit Picks Swish Bulky in the Damson Plum colorway, which now looks red, which it shouldn't. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's much better color representation. It's a very reddish purple, um, and I used that for the shell and some of the legs, which one of these legs just does not want to sit right, no matter what I do. I'm not sure why. This poor one has a broken leg. <laughs> um, and I did just a bunch of mismatching legs and fun stripes on the belly to stretch out the rest of that white. And it worked out pretty well. And then I used some of my eyes from 6060 on Etsy and decided to give him brown eyes because I thought it would help a little bit with the purples. And I'm of the opinion that purple loves brown. It also loves gray and it loves black. Purple loves neutrals. And so yeah, here he is. He's all done. He's very large and now I just need to get pictures of him so he can go live on my daughter's bed. And she was very excited about that. So yes. <laughs> He is out of stash and I'm very happy because that was a bunch of yarn that got used up and now there's only little tiny bits of it left over and my daughter felt good because she got something knit for her. So I think this is where we are going to insert the video of my daughter pulling the bag for my next pair of socks I'm going to knit. All right, so now that you've seen that I finished those other socks, <laughs> It is now time to finally pick one of the bags from my personal sock club this year. I'm getting a bit of a late start, but hopefully after my husband's socks, anything else that I do will go very quickly. My daughter is here to help pick the bags because she's super excited about it. And all right, do you want to pick one out? Drum roll, please. You can pick any bag you want. Do you just want to take one off the top? Okay, do you want to? I'm, I'm looking at the... Oh, okay, okay. This one's heavy, a little bit heavier than this one. Is this the one you want? Is this our bag? All right. We're going to open this up. We'll try to keep the crinkling to a minimum. What are you hoping to see in here? Purple. You're hoping to see something purple? I did put some purple skeins in some of these bags, so we might see some purple. Sorry, guys. I'm going to try to get these staples out of this bag so they don't end up in my dog's stomachs at some point. All right. That's yours to open. You tell me what it is. You show us. Ooh. Oh, that sounds good. I was right. Were you right? Oh, this is going to be good. All right, guys. So we've picked out two skeins of opal here. I love those. There will be leftovers. So we've got first from Opal Sweet and Spicy 2 line, color 8615, which I believe is based off of Red Cabbage. And Opal's Solid Sock line, color 5186, which I believe was labeled as Lilac. Um, these were inspired by Susan B. Anderson. Um, she had done a really beautiful pair of socks about six months ago and um, I had to knit the exact same socks for myself so I found the exact same yarns. I even had to get, buy from a German supplier to get the yarn and uh, yeah so this is what I'm going to be working on next for my own pair of socks and apparently I might be making a second pair with the leftovers from the main body color because someone here also likes purple. So you'd want socks or would you want something else? Can you make a dress out of the leftovers? No. A doll dress. Socks. I can make a little stuffed animal. Stuffed animal. Little stuffed animal? Okay, well we will talk about that at that time. Alright, so there we go. Okay, so now you have seen what my next pair of socks is going to be. Those, um, as I mentioned, were to do a copycat of a pair of socks that Susan B. Anderson had knit and, of course, then drove up the sales of those two colorways of opal because it's very hard to resist <laughs> the way um, 
she showcases yarn and she makes you realize, oh, it's actually really, really pretty. Um, I think she does an excellent job with her photos and enabling people. So that is something that I'm definitely going to be knitting next. And I'm going to try them on new to me needles. I've decided to give Knit Pro Zings a try. And I found some at a domestic seller. Um, I think it's the Wooly Thistle. I will definitely link it in the show notes. And I bought two pairs of 2.0 millimeter or US size zeros in the 80 centimeter or approximately 32 inch size. Um, if they had these in tw approximately 24 inch size, I would have bought those because I tend to magic loop my single socks on 24 inches. Um, it's not a problem for me. I, I, I prefer to not have a ton of cable sticking out. But since there were only 32 inch availables, um, I just went with those. Um, I'm looking forward to trying them. Just looking at them in the package, they look a little on the blunt side to me, but we'll see how that goes. I know a bunch of people who have been using them love them, and um, my friend Kate has said that they are probably her second favorite needle, or a close comparison she thought to Addie Sock Rockets in terms of how much she loves them, and those are my sock needle of choice. So I'm going to give these a go with those socks. And then other works in progress I'm planning to start. Um, I'm getting ready to cast on a new shawl. Um, I do want to work on more sweaters this year, but at the moment I kind of want to get a couple of those large shawl quantities out of my stash too. I feel the need to try to get some of my fingering weight yarns out of stash. And last year, when I was doing Knit the Bin and Spin the Bin, which did not last too long, um, I had picked out a bunch of yarns that I was going to use for a pattern that I bought, which I'm, I just finished a shawl by her. I did not realize this is by the same designer. But I had picked up the Brioche Luscious shawl by Andrea Mowry or Dre Renee Knits. And I'm going to start this one. Um, it's not in color, obviously, so you can end up looking it up. There is the name of it. But this is another very large shawl, uh, knit on size four needles again, and it says it should take, a pr oh, it doesn't give a total, I don't think for how much per, but it tells you roughly how much per yarn she used. I'm trying to see if it gives the totals for yarn used. It doesn't. Um, apparently it should have about a 16 inch depth and a 76 inch wingspan by the time it's done. Um, we'll see how that goes. So it sounds like it's almost a little bit more sharpish or those longer, thinner shawls which wrap more like a scarf. But I'm getting ready to start that. Hopefully today I just picked up the two yarns or the three yarns for the first section. Um, mine's going to be a little bit more however I feel like doing it rather than definitely having set colors for each section. And I'm just going to kind of play it by ear and see what I end up doing. I'm also getting ready to cast on another um, scrappy long-term blanket project. Um, I do have my worsted weight blanket on the needles at the moment, but I wanted to start a fingering weight blanket with all of my self-striping and self-patterning sock yarn scraps. Um, all of my scrap totes have been overflowing as of late. And it can be a bit frustrating to have so much left over and it's sitting there taking up room when you need to put more stuff into the bin. So I'm going to start another blanket. And this pattern was originally written for like worsted weight yarn on slightly larger needles. Um, it's called the 10 Stitch Blanket. Uh, it looks like the design company is Frankie's Knitted Stuff. It's a free pattern. It's by Frankie Brown. You can find it on Ravelry. There's two variants. Um, the one I have is the square one, and then there's one that's a circle, cir cir circular, circular one. Um, but this is a blanket where I don't know if you can see too well, but it's 10 stitches all the way around, and it goes kind of like a snail shell all the way around itself. But there is one in particular that I saw, and I don't even remember how I saw it. I think someone in my friend's feed had favorited it um, and I was instantly smitten with it because it looked like she used a lot of self-patterning and self-striping yarns and made it so that it looked like it's boxes of uh, one 
square that's the self-patterning, self-striping, and one square of, in her case, she used bare yarns. But I'm thinking about alternating between rings of self-striping or self-patterning and a semi-solid or a solid color because I have a lot of those kinds of yarns left over too. And I also have many skeins of ones that are semi-solids or um, some, yeah, mostly semi-solids that I'm not going to use for anything else. And so I'm thinking I'm either going to leave them as is and put them into the blanket that way, or I'm going to over dye them all into like neutral types of shades, over dye them with black, over dye them gray, over dye them brown, um, whatever the case may be, and go from there and use them in this blanket because I think it would be an excellent way to use up yarn that I haven't used in a long time. Sometimes it feels uh, a little wrong to over dye indie dyer yarns but sometimes like if you've had something in stash for close to a decade and you haven't used it that's a sign that you don't actually like the color maybe right in my case for some of these it is so that is something else that I'm hoping to cast on um, today. I'm going to use fingering weight yarn and I have some very short um, signature needle art size for little um, single point needles. They're not double point, they're single points and they're they're shorter. Um, and a lot of people have used those for like their um, mitered square blankets. I'm going to try to use those for this project and hopefully it won't get to be too cumbersome as it gets larger and larger and larger. Uh, so let's go on to spinning. Uh, because I finished my... Did I, for... I forgot the bag for it. Oh, well. oh wait, here it is. Uh, because I finished the heel on my husband's sock, one of my carrots to get through that was that I could start another spin. Um, I've started to find my spinning mojo again, which feels amazing. I haven't or hadn't spun until recently, and I, had, I hadn't spun since Spinzilla in October. There we go. Complete thought. <laughs> get that out of my mouth. Um, the last time I had really spun much was in was Spinzilla in October, which I loved Spinzilla, but like a lot of people after Spinzilla, I was completely burnt out on spinning for a while. And then I had a bunch of other projects to finish, and I just could not bring myself to take the time to spin. Because when I'm spinning, I tend to want to focus on the spin until the spin is done. Um, I'm not somebody who can spin just five minutes here, ten minutes there. I tend to want to spend a good chunk of my craft time during the day spinning when I have a spin going. So I pulled out a skein of Hello Yarn on BFL. It was a Fiber Club colorway. I can't remember what month it was because I forgot the tag downstairs. Maybe that information will be down here or it'll be in the show notes. And it is a colorway called Hummingbird. Now Hummingbird I bought, I got my club skein, or club skein, my club braid, and then I ended up ordering two extras because I really liked the colorway a lot. And I wanted to do something like a pair of socks and then maybe a shawl with it. Um, I decided I was going to chain ply it. I split it up like for socks. I think I split it into 12 separate pieces or 10 separate pieces. And uh, I did that a very, very long time ago. Sorry, I see a warning on my phone. We have a, wa a tornado watch. That's odd. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's the kind of day we're having. Anyway, sorry guys. Um, and so I ended up leaving the pieces as was and I spun it like I would for socks. Now the only problem is is that this yarn ended up turning out thicker than I would normally knit socks in. So now I have to decide if that's what I'm going to try to do with it. If I'm going to turn it into husband socks because it would be a weight that I would do husband socks at but maybe not one for myself and then have to do contrast heels and toes. If I might do a cowl out of this or what I'm going to do. But it turned out lovely. So I spun it, the first pieces, all one direction, and in the middle point I switched the orientation of the fiber to go the other way, and then I chain plied all the pieces. I'm going to get a little closer to you guys here. <laughs> and I ended up with 4.2 ounces and approximately 290 yards. So this is a very solid DK weight yarn. Um, if the color striping were longer, if I hadn't split it into so many pieces, I would definitely in a heartbeat do this into one of those foolproof cowls. I'm still debating it because the stripes might not be too thin, but this is what I ended up, oh, that color's good. This is what I ended up with. Like it's very sea foamy like my shirt. And it is just, oh, it's lovely. It's very soft and it's very squishy. I'm very happy with how it's been turning out. Um, since switching over to my Hanson e-spinner from my old one, my spins, the feelings of them have gotten a lot better. It's been much easier to not overspin 
my singles on my new spinner but look at how pretty that is this colorway was full of like this bittersweet orange there are these red kind of mulberry colors that adrian loves to use there was a very very dark indigo bordering into black dark purples um there was like a sky blue in here and then there was um this really pretty I'm trying to think of how to describe this color it's very much like this green um where it's more of like it's not quite a jade green it's brighter than a jade green but it's got that very slight slightly grayed out quality to it there was that and then they came together to make all these minty shades and oh, it's just it's such a pretty skein you guys and like I said it's called hummingbird and I'm really happy with it and I'm now debating what I want to do with it because again it's just a touch thicker than I would like for socks um it is a little thick and thin because I have a hard time spinning BFL um, it's a little harder for me to draft and keep consistent than some other fibers but overall I'm really really happy with it the quality of it is good I know there's one section hiding in here somewhere where my plying got really screwed up and I couldn't fix it so there is definitely a small ugly section in here where my singles got all messed up but overall it's really nice um, now I have to decide what I'm gonna do with it part of me is almost tempted to split up my other two braids the same way and then just spin them out and hopefully get about the same weight yarn in all three and then turn maybe all three into a shawl or it's almost enough to even do uh, maybe with a semi-solid or a solid yarn stripe it into um, a sweater or something I don't know I'll figure it out there is no hurry and I'm gonna decide later what to do so I'll show you guys that one more time yeah, it's just it turned out really well overall I'm very happy with it I just wish that I could have gotten about another 50 to 70 yards out of it if it were just a touch thinner and closer to sport weight than DK weight I could have definitely made socks but I might still do that so we'll see so let me think guys I've shown you the needles that I got which were one of my stash enhancements for this week that are going into those socks and then I told you last time that I was in search of some moon rover fiber and that I had gotten a skein off a of D stash a skein a bump I don't know why I keep wanting to call fiber a skein but I had gotten a bump of one of the colorways I was looking for and that arrived which is the August 2014 colorway um, you're not gonna be able to see it very well in the plastic but it is uh, like that again that really deep russety orange these soft grayed out greens hot hot pink soft pink purple gray there's some gold in here and a little bit of like aubergine is in here too but it's a very and a little bit of soft jade green very very pretty it was my favorite braid I think out of the time I was in the club and I had used part of it in that hand spun sweater that I did um, last year that you guys all saw and part of me regretted using that braid because I liked it so much and I decided that I'm gonna try to collect some now because I think Lacey had um, dyed up some that was very similar to this and it was pretty much the same colors and then she made herself a hand spun sweater out of it and it was amazing so for the time being I'm gonna hold on to this and I'm gonna try to collect at least a couple more skeins of it it's raining outside <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that sound was I was hearing and I'm gonna try to collect a couple more skeins bags of this bumps of this and see if I can't get enough to do some sort of a smaller sweater project with it or I guess if not in the end I'll just spin myself some socks and guys if all you're interested in is the crafting content I think that's all there is for today thank you for joining me okay guys so for those of you who are sticking around I guess really quickly I'm going to talk about Lammy here before we head into life chat and um, the main thing about Lammy is I haven't been dying any yarn lately um, I've been in a very low energy kind of a mood. I've had some other stuff going on too that's made it difficult to want to work. And I'm hoping to find some time in the next week or so to get some more done because I've decided that for now, I think I'm going to try to switch over to a once a month large update for Lammy. Um, and I would make it the same day of the month every time. Um, and then 
uh, when I'm getting things ready to go, I would upload pictures onto Instagram and say, hey, this is going to be here, this is going to be there. Have a set date um, and see how that works out for me. Um, because right now, I'm not in the mood to dye a lot of repeatables. Uh, next month in June, Lammy actually turns three. And I've been dyeing the same colorways with a couple extra new ones every once in a while for three years. And quite honestly, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but I'm sick of doing the same colorways. And I think for a little while at least, I want to break free and have the freedom to do whatever I feel like doing. And then I will still do some of the repeatables, but I think I'm not going to make it a point to um, focus on those so much because I don't do this full time. Uh, Lammy is a bit more of a hobby than a business. She's kind of in this weird in-between space where she's not quite a hobby, but she's not quite a proper business. Um, she does tend to be when I feel like working and when I have the energy to spare to work, and that has just not been lately. Uh, the shop still has quite a bit of stuff in it, by the way, if you like the repeatable colorways. And actually there's uh, several experimentals in there right now too that haven't really been moving too well. I really probably should get some better photos of them maybe. Anywho, uh, so I'm going to be working on that. Uh, at the moment, for sure, what I have for when I do an update, and I'm hoping to aim for... I had hoped originally later this week, but I haven't had a chance to dye anything else up, so I'm thinking sometime late next week or around the middle of the month somewhere in there will be um, I'm hoping to do a larger update and in there there will be some of the Corydale sock I'm trying to maybe use this particular update to get rid of odds and ends of bases that I'm not going to stock full-time or that I'm just not going to stock period um, I've been doing a lot of different thinking about Lamy and what bases I want to carry what do I want to focus on and um, it's hard because there's been a, a recent infusion a very strong one into speckle dyeing uh, so there's a whole bunch of new faces dying these days and I'm the kind of person that I like to have kind of my own little space and my own little niche uh, I don't like to be crowded either figuratively or literally I like a lot of space so I'm currently trying to figure out what direction I want to go to kind of make some room for myself again instead of just being one of those speckle dyers so anyway guys, um, be watching for that. Uh, in the future here, fairly soon too, I'm going to break Lammy out into her own Instagram account so that way people who do not want to see my personal content and just want to follow her can do that and vice versa, people who want to follow me on Instagram and see my crafty stuff but maybe don't necessarily want to see Lammy advertising uh, can join and see Lammy over there and then that way hopefully <laughs> we'll find a good balance here I don't know it's gonna be a little bit though because I'm actually waiting on the new um, iPad generation uh, iterations to come out and I'm not quite sure when those are gonna be um, so I'm gonna wait until they bring out the new ones before I decide to get one ah so anyway let's talk about life for just a little bit here so in the last couple of weeks my husband has come home which he was the last time I talked to you all he is now in Alabama doing his classes and he will be there through June I think it's kind of hard to say he's part of a um, guinea pig group where they're trying to shorten the course he's currently taking and trying to press the information into an even shorter period of time which I don't think it's going to go so well. It's a very uh, information intensive course, but they're apparently trying to find ways to cut the budget on that. So that's what they're doing. So he is currently doing that. I'm going to shift here for a second. Uh, and my parents have since come and gone for visiting too. Uh, their main purpose of their visit was to go to the wedding of my father's sister, my aunt, and she got married in Niagara Falls on Saturday, just a couple days ago. But since they were coming out this way, they brought me some of the things from my grandmother's house that um, my grandmother had left to me and things that I had saved from her home that no one else had claimed yet. So I now have a new TV, which, I mean, is exciting. It's also a little sad because I keep looking at it and thinking, oh, it was my grandma's TV, but now it's my TV. And there is a new side table in my living room. It turns out she and I had the exact same side tables and I didn't realize it. And so I now have a pair, a match to mine, that came from her house. So that's kind of neat. And then there's a whole bunch of different glassware and things that my mom and my father brought to me. And their visit was, it went pretty well. Um, it could have gone better. My father had extreme sciatic pain. Uh, most of the time he was here and he wasn't eating and decided to take... And said on an empty stomach, so he made himself very sick 
for several days. Um, yeah, it ended up being mostly rainy anyway, so we kind of just all sat around and watched TV, ate food, and I did some crafting while talking with my mother for the most part. But the kids really enjoyed having their grandparents here, and my mother especially enjoyed seeing the kids. So it all ended up working out, and they will all be out here again at the end of next month to pick up my children for their six to seven weeks in Wisconsin, hanging out with all of their grandparents for the summer while I spend some time here hopefully having some space to myself and some time to just relax and not have to work and worry so hard for about a month and a half. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, going whole hog into Tour de Fleece this year and uh, I'm excited about the idea that I don't have to be constantly cooking and cleaning up dishes because I'll have to clean up only my own dishes for a little over a month which will be really nice. Um, I'm looking forward to not having to run my dishwasher once every day or twice every <laughs> twice every day so anyway let's see um there's not much else going on in the next week or two until i talk to you guys just normal standard stuff um just normal school stuff normal appointments um nothing too terribly exciting coming up that i can think of it's just we are now in may which is the last full month of school uh, my children will be going through the, I think the third week in June is when they finish up. So we still have a bit of a trek to go. We have a full quarter left of school. But I know a lot of you are getting out at the end of this month or the very first week of June. So you guys have to be really excited. Um, I'm not quite to the point where I can be super excited yet. That'll come after Memorial Day at the end of this month. So I'm hoping that time is kind to me and it passes quickly because I'm just, I'm ready for summer to be here. I'm ready to hide out and be by myself for a bit and to just spend a lot of lovely time just being quiet. Uh, that is what I think I need most right now is I need a really good solid week of just nothing. <laughs> No stimulation. I just need to, I need to go into ultimate introvert mode for at least a good solid week to uh, finally find my balance again, I think, and to also get my sleep schedule back on order. So I think I had mentioned early on in the episode that I might do a media recommendation this week. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, there's another one that I would like to recommend, but I haven't watched it yet, so that'll have to wait until next time. I really want to watch the... Uh, miniseries adaptation of American Gods. I'm actually reading that right now for my first time. Despite the fact that Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite fiction authors, um, I haven't read that book. I've owned it for forever in a hardcover copy, a really pretty one, which I don't think I have accessible to me right at the moment, but it's one of those beautiful um, fake leather bound ones where they have the decorative um, illustrations all over them. I'm currently reading that, but at my current rate, I'm reading only like two chapters a week, maybe three, which is pitifully slow. Um, I, one of the things I am looking forward to this summer is with no children around. If I want to read a book all day, I can do that, which to me sounds absolutely amazing. Um, when I read fiction, I tend to want to just go whole hog into the world. I want to be immersed in it and I want to just live it for about a good solid six to 12 hours, however long it takes to read. Um, I don't like barely dipping my toe in and then having to pull back out. So um, it's been a little frustrating trying to read that because I only really get to read it on the weekends. Um, when my children do not have to go to school, I tend to wake up more slowly by reading a chapter and then getting ready and doing my day thing. Um, I'm still trying to get back to into the habit of getting up to bed a little earlier so maybe I can read enough at night that I can start reading a little bit more quickly again. So anyway, that's not my media recommendation this week, although I would strongly um, recommend any fiction that Neil Gaiman has written. Um, some of my favorite books are by him or co-authored by him. Uh, but what I am going to recommend is that Hulu is doing a miniseries that is an adaptation of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, this book was written, or actually it was published 30 years ago in 1987, and I think it was a response to the backlash against the uh, second wave feminist movement. Um, I guess in the 80s when I was a wee little thing, um, there was a severe anti-feminist backlash, and I think that is largely in part what inspired this novel. Um, I'm trying to think of how to describe it without giving away too many plot points, but this is about America 
in the current contemporary time for there, but so the miniseries has updated it to the current day. Um, it's very 2016-2017 feeling, which is one of the things I really like about the series is how they adapted it to fit modern life instead of 30-year-ago life. But it's about America and how it was taken over by an extreme uh, fundamentalist Christian government and group and army. And um, in the book, they're a little more vague about uh, terms of how much of America was taken over, um, but also because this is being told from the point of view of the nameless handmaid. Um, she doesn't have a name in the book ever besides the one that she's given in this world. Women don't have their own names anymore. They have titles or they have new names that are given to them. And I don't think there are any women besides possibly the new the few new children who are being born who have a given name. Um, at least in the book version, it made it sound like even the wives of the commanders, the highest ranking women in society, don't even have their actual names. They were born with, they were given new ones um, when they were paired off with these men. Um, but anyway, uh, women are split into uh, castes or classes of sorts. Um, women who still have functional reproductive systems and are young enough become handmaids which um, the main character in here Offred is and um, it's based on the biblical story of Rachel and her handmaid Leah or is it Leah and her handmaid Rachel I can never remember my uh, knowledge is a little bit rusty these days um, but the idea of women who can't bear children offering up a surrogate to try and have children for them because in this world um america has environment has become so toxic that i think it's only like one in five children survive being born or are born without severe defects um so there's a a massive um population crisis in this book and then this religious group takes over and they um enact an extreme religious uh, government and so they talk about in here and they do talk in the television series about pockets of resistance and areas in the US where there's still a lot of fighting going on and this group hasn't fully taken over and um, I don't think in the book they mentioned it but in the, the TV series they talk about how like the only part of the United States that's still the United States is Alaska <laughs> So um, it's it's a wild book. It's a dystopian novel. Um, it's rather depressing in a lot of ways, but it's also really well written and it'll make you think. And I think it's an important book to read right now. And I know that since our elections in um, November, this book has been in high demand and there's a really good reason for that. And I wish a lot more people had read it earlier than recently. Uh, and then the timing of the series was just um, coincidental because they had already had it in the pipeline and in the works to release this year anyway. Um, but it feels even more um, necessary now than it may have had other events transpired. So anyway, recommendation. Read the book. Uh, there's an audiobook on Audible that they have a special edition right now being read by Claire Danes, which I have purchased and haven't listened to yet, but the uh, segment that I listen to is the sample. Um, a lot of times Audible will give you three to four minute samples. I really liked how Claire was reading it and it was very interesting to listen to and very engaging. So um, there are currently three episodes on Hulu. As of this next Wednesday, there will be more. Um, I would recommend it. It's very well done. Um, the cinematography is beautiful, uh, like many modern um, video media. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to describe it. Video media shows and things. Uh, it has a very dark kind of gritty feel to it. Uh, it definitely doesn't shy away from the topics at hand and actually they took a lot of the themes in the book and the things that were happening to the women and they actually um, ramped them up a bit. And I think some of that has to do with the fact that sci-fi, even though it's meant to be um, representative of you know, a future or a different world is always very telling about the time it was written in. And so things that in the mid 80s, late 80s would have seemed really extreme, <laughs> I think we're not quite extreme enough based on the current world we live in. 
yeah so now that I've rambled about that I would I would recommend it as long as you know you have a strong stomach the mini series on Hulu is rated MA because it is it's not so much that it's graphic depictions of different types of violence and acts but they are talked about and they are heavily implied um, and I would not recommend it for somebody too terribly young. I think if you had an older teenager who's, you know, pretty mature or is able to handle that kind of subject matter, it would be okay. But it would not be something that I would show my kids. And also, if you happen to, you know, if there are certain things that trigger you, like um, assault, I would not, um, maybe, maybe not watch it without knowing that beforehand. So anyway, um, I think that is it, guys. That's the only thing I'm going to recommend for now. I will talk to you in about two weeks. I think it'll be around the 24th of May when I record again. And I will leave you, as I always do, saying, until we talk again, please be your very best selves and do good things. Bye, kittens.